right, going into the YMCA just to do a quick swim. It's only gonna be about probably 1200 meters. Do 1200 meters in 30 minutes. Um, I did sign up today for the um, Fort DeSoto Sprint Triathlon. And with that said, it took about, I don't know, about 15 minutes. I seem to struggle with my USAT um, number, USAT code. That's the insurance that you have to buy to do any kind of organized triathlon event. Um, and what I mean by organized, it's like a safety thing. They actually, um, you know, airlift you out if you were to get hurt or something like that. So we are now at the swim. So we're going to do our laps right here in the lap pool. You can see right here. So check the box. The Fort DeSoto Triathlon is signed off on June 4th, which is a Sunday. So I'm gonna have some more footage here in a few. All right, so we checked the box. We got the swim completed. Um, you'll see a little bit of footage where we're swimming. We're actually putting our arm out like this and then pulling down the water and we're doing a total of four strokes and then we're breathing bilaterally what that means is something when you hit your four strokes you're turning to the left breathing only out your mouth and you're not blowing out your nose so a lot of folks will use a little pinch tool to go over their nose so they don't breathe out their nose so you're simply pulling that water back in your mouth and then you're letting that air come out and then breathing air back out breathing in air back out as you're in the water you're breathing out obviously when you're when your head's to turn you're actually pulling that air back in your lungs not breathing out your nose uh, try to keep that air if you can and that'll be the training tip for a swim 25 meters down 25 meters back nice and easy all right so we are leaving the ymca we're headed to the house probably going to go down to the park a little bit with the boys try to wear them out that is definitely the goal so they will sleep through the night. They are two and five. Lucas is two. I mean, Lucas is five. Caden is two. And we're definitely gonna try to get some uh, energy out of those two guys down at the park. So let's see if we can make that happen. Um, that's pretty much it. So let's jump in the car and ride on down there. All right, so we're doing a new uh, run group. Um, and there's some talk about not just another run group for the name or just another run group for the name. So I guess the correct phrase will be not just another run group so when you're talking amongst your fellow workers or your peers or someone at church or whatever the case may be you're like there's our run group at church what's the name of it and you're like not just another run group no really what is the name and you're like no it's not just another run group you're like oh okay so that's the little humor behind my thoughts and my mind. Um, today, I am running in 
some New Balance. They're brand new. They are the 860s. Uh, I was told anytime you have an eight in a New Balance shoe, it is a stability shoe. Anything other than an eight, um, it is a neutral shoe. So I had some guy at a 5K that I got a PR on um, 22 minutes. Uh, sub 22 I should say and I definitely want to have some post race thoughts on this race also um, probably save that a little later um, in a quicker segment today we're more focused on the run that we're doing so if you let me put this camera down for just a second so I can fix my shoe so we're going to start out here on Buckingham and we're going to go to Lake Hollingsworth and we're going to go to the left. Uh, there is a safety crosswalk with a light and the whole nine yards. We're going to run around the lake and then when we get back, we're going to come back up Buckingham and end at Common Ground and that's going to be the route. So let's get it started. I think I'm ready. I guess I better start my watch. Run, headed on swim, because I did a swim yesterday. I'm always doing something. I stay very busy, very active, a lot of cardio. Um, training tip, real quick, off the route. A lot of folks ask me, why do you wear a heart rate? And it just went off. The heart rate is a little more accurate than the Garmin. I do believe in the Garmin, I love the Garmin, but I do also believe in accurate heart rate so I can watch my, my heart rate. Um, it's really good on the bike too, so when you have the bike Garmin on there, you don't have your watch on, and you look at the bike Garmin, you can look at your watts, your heart rate, your miles per hour, um, your cadence, I mean your time, it's just all right there. So you don't have to look down at the watch and see uh, what your heart rate is. So yeah, definitely a good thing to have. And it's usually five to 10 beats off versus the Garmin versus the heart rate because it's right here on your heart. So let's check that run out, see what it looks like. Always remember, stretch. Two, three, four, five minutes, just stretch and get it on. All right, we're about one mile in, eight minute pace. I didn't want to talk about the first mile. The first mile, it's not great. You're just trying to get in, trying to get settled in to your pace. And then your body's just flowing. So that's what I like about the first mile going into the second mile. You're not breathing heavy. You're just kind of relaxed. You're setting in. And I'll tell you what, I can remember, you know, 10 plus years ago when I started running, I couldn't even run one light pole. And now I'm running, you know, five, eight, 10, you know, 15 miles. And after the first mile, I'm just settling in and everything's just moving. So let's get back to the run. Just wanted to share that. All right, three miles in, the new course is set. It was about an eight minute pace for a little over three miles. So pretty much behind me, you can see there, is going to be the lake. And this is a little side road. It's about 0.1 maybe 0.2 all the way through I would say um, from the parking lot where we're gonna cross safely is like I said 0.1 point 0.2 point um, it's gonna be a, a good safe distance uh, we're gonna have a oh I I really want an eight minute pace group, but I mean, it is Thursday um, that the race is gonna happen. So I don't wanna push people too much, but I would definitely say 
110% will be a nine minute pace group, a 10 minute pace group, which will be A will be nine, B will be 10, and then um, the C group will be walkers and strollers. Um, I do want to put it out there. If you want to hit the group and you want to, you know, be a, be a race for you or like a, a 5K prep and you want to see what your time is, by all means, I've done groups where we were going down this trail and it was with some older, 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 uh, older crowd, I should say. And they were like, we're doing 10 to 12 miles an hour on these bikes. If you want to go, you know, down, it was like three or four roads that we crossed and meet at this, this park and then turn around and come back. You can go down there and you can wait on us or you can just come back. Um, but you can always start with a group. Uh, you don't have to finish with the group, but there's going to be people that are going to do, you know, 12 to 15 miles an hour. So you are welcome to stay with us or welcome to, you know, give it all you got. And because people are competitive, let's face it, when you get two or more guys together, we're going to be competitive. It's in our nature, regardless if it's a group or not. So I'm definitely going to set some ground rules for first and foremost, this is not a race. This is a event um, to get people together and to fellowship and communicate. And my goal would be if you get someone that gets connected that otherwise would not have got connected in a large group or church setting, then I would say definitely a small group is where it's gonna happen. For instance, quick story. I went to this little banquet and I've seen this lady a thousand times, didn't know her name. She introduced herself as Rebecca. Uh, I met her husband and we talked for an hour and we got to know each other. If I would not have went to that event, that would not have happened. So I'm definitely thankful that we had that event. So I believe with everything in my being that with a small group setting, you have no choice but to fellowship and make new friends and go from there. But it will be a huge, huge turnout. And this right here is going to be the field that we're going to meet in. It's right here. I will show you real quick before we end this little session in the video. Okay, so it's about 8.30 in the morning. I've uh, been up early, kind of straightening up, getting ready, getting uh, my day planned. Um, today is gonna be a century, gonna do probably a 100 miler. Uh, gonna be doing some, some speed workouts. Um, we're pretty much going to I would say north, north Lakeland, almost the Dade City. And then we'll be heading back through, I would say most likely Polk City. And then we're going to head it off uh, with a South Lakeland and then a Bartow, 
maybe Fort Meade. We'll just see how deep we go into Plant City on the way to North Lakeland. We're going to kind of go out and around. It's going to be like a big circle. 100 miles, century. Um, going to be doing some, some speed workout because we do got a race coming up in about 17 days. Uh, June 4th at Fort DeSoto. It's only a sprint, but I always do train pretty hard because um, I do work, so I do train also um, hard. I put in probably 10 to 12 hours a week training. It's just, it's my mental. It's what I, it's what I love to do, and it just kind of gives me that clarity. It, it clears my mind because we have definitely a... Um, a challenge in life, so to speak, with work, play, um, exercise, kids, family, church, you name it. It's a lot, but at the end of the day, you check the boxes, and you get it done, and you stay positive, and the mental part of staying positive is very powerful, so please stay positive. Um, and then after the century workout, we're going to do probably a one-mile swim. And then we're going to top it off with a 5K workout. So come along. It's going to be a long, uh, I'd say probably eight to nine hour training day. But let's get it done. That's what we're here for. We're at Lucky's Lake Swim, about to get our swim on. We're gonna go over about 600 yards and then back 600 yards. Try to do 12 to 13 minutes right around there. It's a good day for a swim. It's Memorial Day. Uh, got here in about 45 minutes, 50 minutes. Wasn't a bad drive over. So let's jump in the water and see what's going on. And the water's probably about 78 right now. We'll be back. All right, we're at Lucky's Lake Swim. I definitely beat my fear. As you can see behind me, it's 700 yards over, 700 yards back. And I had no buoy, no safety device. It was all in my mind. Anytime I did a race, I was like, you gotta wear a wetsuit. You gotta wear some shorts that have buoyancy to them. But guess what? I conquered. And I defeated fear when it comes to open water swim. Over and back, no problems. It was very streamlined. A little bit slower. I feel like it took me about 30 minutes, 15 over and 15 back. When I have a wetsuit on or if I have, um, you know, some kind of uh, flotation device, uh, a buoy to go behind me, then I seem like I'm a little bit faster. But today, I did great. I conquered that fear. I just want to put that out there for everybody and let them know. I want to thank you for watching the video this week. Remember, find a triathlon, stay safe, 
Have fun and do it with a smile on your face.